So today, we're doing a game. You guys are gonna be training each other. In order to train a dog, you must become the dog. There's a bunch of items that were randomly selected. So honestly, do it with, with really anything. Mm -hmm. But the only form of communication that we're gonna have to train you is this. This is the only form of communication that you're gonna have to train each other. You can't explain things to a dog. You can only mark it. If I wanted to get someone to simply just put this around the Sharpie like this, you can click as they touch the Sharpie to let them know, oh wow, they touched the Sharpie. Okay, that's good. And they're gonna be like, oh, what else do I do? What else do I do? Um, and then I get a click as I touch this. They're like, oh, okay, well, maybe I should try something with this. Cool. So the only time you're gonna click more than once is that's just gonna mark like the end of, of the behavior. You're gonna have to train each other. And at first, we're gonna give you guys very, very simple things to do. And then it's gonna increase in difficulty as we go. Asia, you're not a dumb dog, okay? I'm not. You're not, I promise you. No. I know. All right, so what we're gonna do, a quarter to a half step of that or something similar, because then what we can do is teach a half step then we label that behavior, and then you can get them a head start by giving them that behavior, and then seeing what they what they build from there. Right. That's genius. Or you can do two separate things and then chain them together. Mm. So you teach something and label it banana. You teach something else and call it orange. Now, if you want to do banana and then orange, you can have them do banana then orange, or you can teach them banana first, and then like let them try to figure out from banana to get to another thing. Mm -hmm. So you can either build upon one thing that you've already labeled or do two separate things and chain them together. I'll leave it up to you. Start with something pretty easy. She should be able to get that. And we'll call that banana. Okay. Banana, good banana. <laughs> there we go. Great, so we just figured out a behavior. She knows banana. My dog knows banana. <laughs> I know and now, banana. And now you know banana. How do you feel after we're actually getting it right? Felt so good. Okay. I thought it was dumb for a second. Swirl. Okay. Good banana. Thanks. Okay. Swirl. Ah, good banana swirl. <laughs> but now you can have banana, or you can have swirl, or you can do banana then swirl, just like you did. So you, you basically have two separate behaviors that you can then ah. paste together. So then we'll start with this entirety. Okay. Okay. So we so let's get one good oh. look at that here. Oh. All right, good night. Gonna switch over to doing e collar now. Who wants to be the first dog to be, I'll go first. To be e collar trained first? I'm scared. Can I wear it on my arm or does it have to be on my neck? Yeah, does it have to be on the neck? It doesn't have to be on the neck. You can wear it on the arm. Oh, thank God. <laughs> all right, all right. Hand it over. Hand over the e collar. Oh, wait, we gotta find your working level. Let's go. No, it's, it's <laughs> his working level is max. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm
job. <laughs> How do you feel as the dog right now? That game sucks <laughs> compared to the clicker. Like, I was not excited to keep playing. I didn't want to keep playing because every time I even tried, I got shocked. Every time I, every time I even attempted to do anything, it was like, no. But then like with the clicker, I feel like I was excited to get that noise, you know? Behavior is Sorry. my question. Say again? Is using E for a brand new behavior without the dog understanding it a bad thing? Why don't you ask the dog? How do you feel about showing up the training? I'm not excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a good question. If you, we still did this, but I gave you a reward for the ones that you did correct, would that have kept you going? Whoa, hold on now. <laughs> You're talking about using multiple <laughs> quadrants of training at the same time now. Yes, like your highest value reward. Hold on, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Because this is the, this is the R plus um, fallacy that I've encountered a lot here. This is most balanced trainers, most smart, intelligent balanced trainers, I should say, I'll generalize here, would absolutely agree that positive reinforcement is better than negative reinforcement. Yeah. Exclusively using positive is definitely better than using exclusively negative. Yeah. Right? For sure. Right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, you're more excited to show up the training when it's reward based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're less excited to show up the training when it's just negative based. But we're going to do the next exercise is going to be what happens when you have both. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have an e collar mm -hmm. and you're going to have a clicker. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a little bit of juggling, but you, I want you to have one in each hand. Mm -hmm. So just know that one's positive and mm -hmm. one's negative. And we'll put Casey through another exercise. You're so brave, Casey. Yeah. <laughs> now get very, very specific with what you want to teach him. So okay. it's only going to involve what These you want. These two. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So now we'll do this. And then when, when you're done, label it and then end the session. Okay. All right? Because like if you were working with the dog for 10 minutes yeah. and then all of a sudden you come to do the thing, are you going to keep going after that just because they, they're on the right track? No. Time. How could you have broken that down even easier? Hmm. Like just maybe like start with the positioning of the link. Maybe? How about how about get rid of the pen? Oh right, and just work on the position of the and how it's standing. Exactly. Okay. So you could have broken that down into a smaller. All right. Cool. All right, Asia. What's something you're learning so far from where we are on this exercise? Um. A lot of the times it really is not the dog, it's me. Like I just feel like I'm, if it's not like timing, it's like what David said, rewarding things that are like mediocre. And like I know sometimes at the start it's good to re reward like even the littlest of things, but if the dog has a level of understanding with that I know for a fact, mm -hmm. I really should be aware of what I'm rewarding. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest thing. But when we're talking about rewarding the dog for little sub things, right. what is that really? That means we're, we're just Breaking a, it down. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. it. So when we're rewarding for eye contact, mm -hmm. we can have all these things on the table. Right. But like, I'm not doing anything except for once in a while, 
this dog's touching all these different things, displaying all these different behaviors, mm -hmm. but when that dog finally touches that one thing, click reward. <clears throat> Right. Click reward. Click reward. We're not yeah. asking that dog to do like these super complex things yet. Right. All right, Casey, what's something you've learned so far from doing this exercise? Um, that I would much rather hear a clicker as a reward than get E'd for not doing exactly what in the trainer's mind I should be doing. Mm -hmm. Just... It was a. It was even more fun, like to do it with just a clicker. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to keep playing, whereas with an e collar, I almost didn't want to play. It's just like I'd rather not do this. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's a great point. Like just something to, to contextualize for anyone who's watching this is that you were getting e probably ninety percent of the time during that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> no, like. <laughs> Now, we're going to try to do another scenario after after mm -hmm. this, where it's like, what if you were only getting E'd 10% of the time? And then you were able to get through the problem faster. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the mm -hmm. problem, you actually get faster, you get like a slice of pizza. Right. And like, I actually like pizza. And like, I'm glad that I got through this even faster, because the faster I got to the pizza. Mm -hmm. Right? No, it was, the E was a nice, clear no. Mm -hmm. Like, I did enjoy that, but... Being told no over and over and over and over again gets old very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great, great lesson. And David, you're up. What did you, what did you learn from being uh, an observer? That Casey's like a golden retriever and Asia is like a border collie. <laughs> <laughs> Casey loves rewards, hates getting eat. Asia... You gotta slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs>